What you see here is the Bloodhound LSR, a revolutionary car that comes with the potential to break the 1,000 miles per hour speedometer scale. Even though this machine is on its way to breaking the land speed record, that's not just what it's known for. The car you see comes with a jet engine that can break the sound barrier. You hear that, right? In this video, we'll take a look at the LSR, a car that would break the sound barrier and yes, the land speed record. So without further ado, let's begin. The LSR is a British land vehicle that is designed for traveling at supersonic speeds with the primary objective of setting a new world land speed record. Crossing the sound barrier and the speed record remain to be some early vision. So the car has been under development since 2008. The car is not just powered by its infamous Eurojet EJ200 jet engine, an engine also used by the Eurofighter Typhoon aircraft. It is also powered by an additional rocket thruster, making it the perfect machine to break the current land speed record. As we examine the car's dimensions, you'll see that its wheelbase has a length of 8.29 feet. The length and width of the car are 42 feet and 8.2 feet, respectively. Also, the car has a height of 9.8 feet and a curb weight of 14,158 pounds. The only car to ever go faster than the speed of sound is Thrust SSC, a car that set the current land speed record of 763 miles per hour in Nevada in 1997. This jet-powered car was driven by Andy Green, the same driver who would drive the Bloodhound LSR to set a new land speed record and break the sound barrier like a jet. This means that only after the LSR crosses your view do you get to hear its roar. If you were to ever catch a glance of this beast, it would most likely be at the Hakskeen Pan in the Meyer area of the Northern Cape, South Africa. This area is 12 miles long and 3 miles wide and was stated to be suitable with the car's first runs in October 2019. With further runs in November 2019, the car could then achieve a top speed of 628 miles per hour. By this time, it had received the title of being the eighth vehicle to attain a land speed that exceeded 600 miles per hour. The car was built at sites situated in Bristol and Avonmouth, and a full-scale model was unveiled at the 2010 Farnborough International Air Show. By October 2017, the car was largely completed when full reheat static testing was undertaken with the jet engine at Cornwall Airport, Newquay. The LSR comes in an aero shape as this car is the ultimate result of modern aerodynamics. The car is designed to be both narrow and slender to avoid aerodynamic stress. The aerodynamics of the LSR have been calculated carefully to make sure that the car is both safe and stable. The primary reason behind the calculation is that the car will create a shock wave as it reaches the speed of sound. As you widen your eyes to catch this car speeding its way, you'll think about what's powering it. One of the most interesting aspects of the car is the Eurojet EJ200 jet engine, which would be used by the car to provide half the thrust and to also power the car to reach 650 miles per hour. To reach 1,000 miles per hour runs, a hybrid rocket from NAMO along with a third engine known as the Jaguar supercharged V8 would be used. This engine is used as an auxiliary power unit to drive the oxidizer pump for the rocket, though this would be replaced by an electric motor. So when the car is at full power, the jet provides 90 kilo newton of thrust, whereas the rocket exerts 120 kilo newton. When combined, it amounts to 135,000 thrust horsepower. This, surprisingly, is more than eight times the power of the cars on the Formula One racing car grid combined. If the LSR is busy at its 1,000 miles per hour run, it would require about 400 liters of jet fuel and 800 liters of rocket oxidizer. The front section of LSR consists of a carbon fiber monocoque that is quite similar in concept to a Formula One tub. This provides the driver with a secure and rigid safety cell. Since the monocoque must take an aerodynamic load of up to 10 tons per square meter, it has taken more than 10,000 hours for its design and manufacture. The upper chassis of the car is where the Eurojet EJ200 engine rests. You can see A-rib and stringer construction here, one that is seen in the aerospace industry. 
The lower part of the rear structure stores the auxiliary power unit, the jet fuel tank, and the rocket system. The structure is made of a series of aluminium frames and bulkheads that are skinned in steel with the help of around 4,000 rivets. The underside of the car's front is made out of titanium, whereas the floor of the rear is made of steel plate. Both these materials were selected to prevent the car's bottom from being worn through by the desert silt. Wheels are often known to help cars cross most hurdles, and the LSR's wheels are no different. The LSR's high-speed desert wheels weigh 95 kilograms. The objectives of these wheels not only include having to carry the weight of a 7.5-ton car, but also not falling apart when spinning at over 10,000 revolutions per minute and subject to a force of 50,000 grams at the wheel rim. The material chosen for the wheels was a special alloy of aluminium mixed with zinc known as 7037. When it comes to the wheel bearings, three Timken high-speed tapered roller bearings were used to support each wheel. Just after the car's overall mass increased to 16,500 pounds, Timken recalculated bearing life to be 50 hours. Though when we think of speed, we often forget brakes. Braking systems proved to be the essence of a super-speed car. The LSR came with three primary braking systems, which were air brakes, parachutes, and wheel brakes. The air brakes are located on both sides of the car in front of the rear wheels. They are made out of carbon fiber and would experience about five tons of load at speeds that would reach up to 800 miles per hour. So what makes the air brakes special? The fact is that they are mechanically straightforward to operate. Bloodhound LSR uses the very same parachutes as Thrust SSC as they require about the same amount of drag at the same speed. The chute system is both simple and reliable. Now, with the click of a button on the steering wheel, a pin from the chute pack will be pulled, and this would allow a large steel spring to force a small drogue chute out into the 650 miles per hour airflow. Last but not least is the wheel brake. They are the final step in slowing the car to a halt after it crosses its record-breaking runs. The LSR has managed to show its uniqueness even in the case of its wheel brakes by using steel rather than the carbon discs used on cars and planes. The LSR is indeed a technological marvel with great potential to break a whole lot of records. What do you think? Will the LSR break the sound barrier and the land speed record? Let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that we can entertain you with more new videos.